welcome to South Texas Healthy Living, a program aimed at helping you get healthy and stay healthy. In this episode, we're focusing on the health concerns affecting Latinos. From learning about the health issues that most affect the U.S. Hispanic population and discussing ways we can prioritize our health with Dr. Francisco Garza Salinas to speaking with a local insurance agent who is also a diabetic about the lack of health coverage among Latinos and the importance of having insurance, and we'll give you tips on finding the right doctor for you. Plus, you don't want to miss our Latin dance-inspired workout that's certain to get you moving, and we'll show you how to make a traditional Mexican dish that's low in calories and high in flavor. From the sunny Rio Grande Valley at South Texas Health System Heart, the Valley's only dedicated heart hospital, which has proudly served the community for more than 25 years, I'm Tom Castaneda. Not seeing a doctor regularly has consequences, yet Latinos are the racial ethnic group least likely to visit the doctor according to recent studies. And Hispanics have higher percentages of poorly controlled high blood pressure, obesity, and death rates from diabetes, health issues that are often often preventable according to the CDC. So let's take a look at the top issues affecting Latino health. Today we're joined by Dr. Francisco Garza Salinas, a family medicine physician with South Texas Health System Clinics. Thank you for joining us as we talk about some of the important issues that affect Latinos, not only nationally, but right here in the Valley. Some of those issues, obviously, there's one big one that, that we see a lot of, unfortunately, and that is obesity. Latinos are 1.2 times more likely to be obese than non-Latinos. And that can obviously lead to other, heart, uh, other issues, including heart disease, stroke. Tell us a little bit about that, carrying all of that extra weight for a long term and how that affects the body. Yeah, yeah, so uh, definitely obesity is one of those topics that we always talk in the office. Some people can be overweight, mildly overweight, uh, obese and se severely obese, but it's something that, you know, that we need to talk about in order to, you know, we have to know that we have options. Um, and obviously, the more weight we carry, the more uh, our risk of diabetes, kidney disease, and heart disease as well. Um, but yes, it's a very important topic that we always have a conversation in the office. And you have um, a BMI and people body mass index. Tell us a little bit about what is that BMI and how important is it for you to be paying attention to it? You know, uh, BMI, is, it's been around for a long time, it's more, for, you know, more than 50 years. Um, but basically, you know, it calculates your height and weight ratio. Um, so even somebody that can be perceived as you know, underweight can have a, a, an abnormal BMI. So it's, yes, the numbers are important, but sometimes there's other options, other things that we look at, you know, your hip ratio um, and overall, you know, uh, waist circumference is more accurate. But the BMI is, is the way we measure it right now. But you're basically the, the, the advice for me is don't concentrate too much on the BMI. Let us evaluate you in other ways as well. All right. And now another issue that we see is hypertension or high blood pressure. It's really common here in the Valley. Approximately one in five Latinos have hypertension nationally. Many don't even receive the right. treatment. How important is it to get that treatment and to just make sure that you keep your, your blood pressure in check? You know, it's, we can have high blood pressure in kids. So, you know, we start screening in young kids at the age of three. Um, and then every year, during your physical, we also uh, monitor your blood pressure. So, you know, it's, it's something that can start early, but you have to diagnose it early and treat it early. As we get older, obviously, it can affect our kidneys, it can affect our heart, it can affect overall our general system. Uh, but the best way is let's kind of detect it and then we, and then we can make, do something about it. And that leads us, obviously, you talked a little bit about um, kidney disease. So Hispanics are 1.5 times more likely to have kidney failure compared to non-Hispanics. And that uh, coupled with diabetes, which is, Hispanics are 17% more likely to have type two diabetes than non-Latinos. Let's talk about the kidneys and how important the function of the kidney is and making sure that, that we're taking care of those kidneys. You know, the kidneys are very important after the age of 30. Uh, physiologically, we lose about one to two percent of our function. That's normal. Um, when we add diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, uh, and then certain medications, it kind of becomes a perfect storm, you know, for your kidney to kind of uh, uh, those numbers to decrease over time. The key is 
you gotta you gotta de detect these medical conditions early, um, and also you know we have to emphasize the importance of exercise um, and try to increase our water intake. So there's, there's other little things that can affect our overall general health of our kidneys. Um, but again, the only way to de detect how the kidneys are doing is by a blood, blood work. Uh, and that's when you know we do that through our physical, uh, annual physical every year. And I think with all of these conditions that we're talking about here, one of the key issues that we find is that Latinos don't go to the doctor. And, and they self-medicate and they, they do, we do all of these things. I'm a Latino as well, so I know I've, I've, I've probably done some of these things and maybe I should have gone to the doctor, but how important is it to go and visit your doctor and do that regular checkup or go and see somebody if something doesn't feel right? Yeah, so let me start by saying, you know, it's, it's a credible fear, right? I mean, I don't like to go to my doctor. I have a doctor myself, even though I'm a physician. Um, and I don't like to go. But at the same time, um, you know, he's overall, he's become my friend. So at the end of the day, we're not there to push medications, but at the same time, we're just trying to improve your general health care. Uh, my dad is diabetic as well. Um, you know, we, I've, you know, he comes to see uh, uh, one of my partners um, in the office, um, and it becomes a, a big family. So, you know, everybody's afraid of going, taking that step to seeing the doctor, but it's one that we all have to take at some point. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. We really appreciate it. We'll be right back. It's no secret, leading a healthy lifestyle, including routine doctor visits and preventive screenings, can help prevent chronic diseases and long-term illnesses. But nearly half of U.S. Latinos never visit a medical professional during the course of the year, according to the CDC, leading to poor health outcomes, including a greater prevalence of diabetes and hypertension. Our next guest is living with both. She's a living example that a diagnosis is not an end-all be-all, as long as you manage and control your afflictions. And she's urging the community to take heed of their health and visit the doctor regularly. Hispanics have lower death rates than the general population for most of the leading causes of death with three exceptions, chronic liver disease, kidney disease, and diabetes. And Latinos are more likely to be overweight, according to the CDC, putting them at greater risk for developing serious health conditions. Yet Hispanics are the most uninsured racial ethnic group in the United States, according to the Office of Minority Health. The uninsured rate among Latinos is still more than double that among non-Latino whites. That lack of coverage coupled with low average income rates among the Hispanic population creates serious obstacles to receiving timely and appropriate care. Today, we're joined by insurance agent Marisa Rivera, who is also a diabetic, to talk about her personal health struggles, as well as our insured population here in the Valley. So Marisa, first of all, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for including me. And let's talk a little bit about growing up in the Valley. We're both from the Valley. We grew up here. Was going to the doctor something that you remember doing as a kid? Vaguely. However, I think the time that we started going to the doctor is when you start school. And so you're required to do, you know, have your vaccinations and maybe some exams to get admitted to school. Uh, both my parents being uh, from Mexico, uh, they're used to doing the at-home type of uh, health care. Yeah, so that, I think that's one of the things that we do growing up. The doctor visit was really for something super serious when, when something was really wrong. Absolutely. I recall maybe going to a hospital because I had an accident, but going to the doctor for a cold or a fever, no, those were basically taken care of at home. And the regular checkups were really done when, as you said, like just when we were going to school and getting ready to start a new school year, you needed your immunization, yes. things like that. Now, did you find that you're yourself mainly healthy for the most part because you are dealing with diabetes now, but most of your life, have you, have you been pretty healthy? Thankfully, very healthy uh, growing up, maybe, you know, just a little bit, you know, low on iron, but other than that, 
um, you know, vitamins, uh, maybe take vitamins. But uh, for the most part, I didn't reach diabetes till about age 45. What was it that you were feeling and experiencing at the time that made you th go see the doctor and find out that you do have diabetes? It's funny that you say, what symptoms did I have? I did not have any. It was a regular checkup and that's how we found out. So, you know, generally maybe the population understands that sometimes diabetes, you don't feel it unless it's very severe. And once your numbers start being extremely high, then that's when you realize, okay, something's not right. But at the time, I did not realize it. Well, that's a blessing because most people find out too late. And then you're dealing with insulin, you're dealing with a lot of more of the serious things when it comes to the treatment. Um, but for you to be able to catch it early was, was a blessing then. It was, it was. Uh, when you say early, uh, it was no longer pre-diabetes. It was already full diabetes. So I was probably at about an eight or nine A1C. Oh, wow. And uh, unrealizing that this was going on in my system, so. And, and I think two of the most important things that I know that you do is that you have to eat well and you have to be physically active. And I know that you have made a big effort to make sure that you eat healthy, is that right? Oh yes. Uh, eating healthy is the hardest part, especially when you work and have, you know, a 14 hour day type thing. And so you try and do the easiest uh, breakfast, you know, like bite a few uh, uh, carrots, celeries, apple, you know, on the go. And uh, when lunchtime comes around, really try and make time for, you know, a small salad. If you're in a hurry, hopefully a good uh, healthy lunch if you have time. Yeah, and then physically active. I mean, we gotta move. They say that you have to get 150 minutes of moderate intense aerobic exercise a week. So do you get those hours in? Not always, unfortunately, <laughs> not always. Of course, I always try to do a minimum of 30 minutes a day and then go to the gym, you know, for my hour and a half, you know, full workout. Um, if I don't do that, then I hit the gardening, the yard work, <laughs> things around the house, you know, to just keep active and keep movement. Well, that's great. What do you find when you're talking to the community when it comes to insurance and coverage within our community here? Mm -hmm. Well, when I talk to people, they know they want health insurance. They know they need health insurance. Unfortunately, uh, sometimes if they don't understand their health insurance plan, they let it go, they don't use it, they're afraid to use it. And so I highly recommend those that you already have health insurance, please talk to your agent regularly, ask them questions. That's why we're there, so that you can use it and get all your exams, all your medications. All the plans work, you just need to understand how they work. Alrighty, and what advice do you have when it comes to your health and making sure that you um, are making every effort to stay healthy? Think about why you are on this earth. Is it about your family, your children, you know, and that is why you take care of yourself. You wanna be there for them, or you wanna see them grow up. You wanna see that graduation, that wedding, you know, every family occasion, you know, hopefully, you know, that's what you want. Therefore, you take care of yourself. Alrighty, well thank you so much for your time, we really appreciate it. And if you'd like to learn some more information about the health services available, you can visit SouthTexasHealthSystem.com. It's a simple fact, being physically active is one of the most important things you can do for your health. Yet about 32% of Latinos are not physically active after work, according to the CDC, putting them at greater risk for health concerns ranging from obesity to cancer. That's why it's important to get moving. And what better way to do that than with Zumba, a fitness program that combines cardio with Latin-inspired dance. Now to show us exactly how to do it, please welcome Rick Flores, with South Texas Health System Rehabilitation Services. Now Zumba, can anyone do it? Anybody can do Zumba, it's a super easy activity for anyone to get involved in. Get out there and start doing it. And it's not too complicated in terms of steps, whether you're healthy or a little bit heavier, it doesn't matter. No, Zumba comes in a range of complexities, you just sign up for the right class and you'll be feeling really good. 
Awesome, so let's get started. All right, let's get that first step going. So I'm gonna teach you guys the basic salsa step. We're gonna start right from the center of your body. You're gonna start with your right foot. So you're gonna step with the right foot out. You'll rock on your left foot and bring it back in on three. In salsa, you always hold the four because that's like kind of like the vibe of salsa. So you'll go one, two, three, hold four. Now you're gonna do the same thing with your left, correct? One, two, three, hold four. So let's try it all together, right and left. Ready? Ready? And okay. one, two, three, hold four. One, two, three, hold four. That's great. Now we did side to side. We're gonna go front and back now. Ah, so we're gonna same thing with, things. Exactly, with the right foot. So you go one, two, three, hold four. Left, two, three, hold four. All right. So we put it all together. You'll have like your basic salsa step, right? And if you want, if this is where you start getting creative. You can even do the chicken wing, whatever you want to do, as long as you keep your whole body moving. So right, then you'll do. One whole one, let's do Correct. that. Correct. So right, two, three, together. Left, two, three, forward. One, two, three, hold four. Back, two, three, hold four. All righty, so that's the first step? Yes. Awesome. All right, so we mastered the first step, the basic salsa, so what's next? So the next thing we're gonna make it a little bit more complicated just to get you guys going a little bit more, work on our mobility, get our body moving even more. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cross the right leg over, so you're gonna cross, kind of do like an old school jazz square, right? So okay. one, step back on your left. Okay. Two, three, you hold on four. Okay. Ready, so cross again. Cross it, one, back, two, three, hold, four. Okay. So on the third, on the second step, you wanna shift your whole body weight back so it can look right. kind of cool, yeah? Kind of so cool, kind of sexy. Right, six, back, <laughs> and one, two, three. Right step, back, and together. Right step, back, and together. Right step, back, and together. All righty. Cool. Now I'm starting to sweat. Yeah, good. All right, okay, so we've got the two steps. Now let's get to the third one. So the third step we're gonna do is a traveling salsa step. So if you're anything like me, I don't like to be in one space the whole time. I wanna keep moving and get my body moving all throughout the entire space. So the basic salsa traveling step is the same concept in four counts, but we're gonna be moving side to side. Okay, so a little side to side here. Correct, all so right. you would go right, left, right, together, left, right, left, together. Right, left, right, together, left, right, left, together. And we're following those basic four counts that we're doing from the, the basic salsa. So just remember the four counts always. Correct. And you don't want to cross from the back because that makes a country. We're doing salsa today, yeah? This is Zumba. Yes. This is not country bumpkin. Exactly. So <laughs> to the right again. And right, left, right, together, left, right, left, together, right, left, right, together, left, right, left, together, last. Time to the left, two, three. And that's your traveling salsa step. Alrighty, so we mastered the, the first three steps. Now we're putting them all together. We're gonna put them all together. So we're gonna do the basic salsa, right, left, forward, back. The little crazy salsa all jazz right. square and then two traveling salsa steps. All right, Ready? so let's do this. Let me take a deep breath and get myself in it, get in the zone. Alrighty, so we're going. And we go. Side, together, side, together, front, front, together, back, to the right of the square. One, two, three, four. One, two, traveling, right, left, right, together, left, right, left, together. Good job, that there was good. There we go, nice. alrighty. So there you have it. Some Zumba that you can do at home. And again, this is something that you can just turn on while you're cleaning house and you wanna go ahead and dust a little bit. You can use your hands. Correct. You can do whatever and just put on some nice Latin music. Mm -hmm. Do you and have any moving. preference? Uh, anything for me, really. Uh, you can put Celia Cruz and I'm down all day. Alrighty, so thank you. There you have it. And if you'd like to learn any more exercises, just visit SouthTexasHealthSystem.com. High blood pressure is a serious concern across the United States, especially in the Latino community. It can lead to serious medical issues like heart disease, stroke, and diabetes, if left untreated. That's why it's important to eat healthy. It will minimize your risk. So how do we eat healthy? Well, joining me now is Patrick Wooden. He is the director of nutrition and dietary services for South Texas Health System at Gallen to help us get through this, especially Latinos. We love our food. So how can we eat healthy, Patrick? Well, thank you, Tom. Well, we need to start thinking a little different how we think about Mexican food. And so 
uh, you know, uh, culturally, we eat a lot of heavy, uh, fatty foods. You know, they're deep fried. We use a lot of lard. And so we needed to start thinking differently, right? And continue to have those great flavors that we're used to, but you're eating a little healthier. And today we're making something that I personally love is a taco salad, but we're just gonna make it healthy, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the, our take on a taco salad. So how do we do this? Well, uh, right now we have a little uh, chicken breast cooking over here in the pan, so it should be pretty much ready to come out. And then we have some ingredients here. We're gonna make the taco salad without using any tortillas. And so we have uh, some bell peppers, we have a cucumber, we have the lettuce, we have iceberg in this instance, but you can use any kind of lettuce for that matter. This is the one that I really like. Uh, we have some um, black beans, whole beans, we have rice, we have avocado, queso fresco, and we have a cilantro lime light ranch dressing. The most important thing for us is to consider is the sodium. So in this instance, we use Mrs. Dash, which is low sodium uh, seasoning, and we add some pepper. You can certainly add cayenne pepper, paprika, you can any of the ingredients, but try to keep the sodium to a minimum. And that's really important to keep mm -hmm. those sodium levels down. That's correct. All right, so let's start preparing. All right, well, let's just assemble this, like I said, and you can put anything you like, but this is your typical salad. It's gonna have some rice and some beans. So, so basically, we're making a canvas here to kind of um, layer this up so we just add a little rice in there so we don't want to do the Mexican style rice as much as we want to well, you want to make sure that it's a little healthier that's correct unless you just made it with a regular just tomato and cilantro right but m many of us use the bouillon uh, the chicken bouillon and so that has very salty a lot of high sodium okay so keep the sodium levels down. Yes. Yeah, so and black beans versus pinto beans, which is always nice. It's a little bit of a healthier bean. It's a little different. These are actually just canned beans that we just rinsed off, and you can we warm them up, right? Uh, but you can have them cold as well. And you're adding right? the dressing. A little dressing so that it, on every bite we have that little dressing, right? So now now we have that. We're gonna add some of our lettuce, right? And just kind of make that in there, make a little nest. So then we can put some of the peppers. And you can either separate them. I like them all mixed because I want a little bit of everything on every bite. Um, cucumber is amazing because it gives you a lot of crunch. We have some tomatoes in here. We'll move them in here boop, boop, real quick. Then we're gonna add some of this delicious queso fresco. And uh, then we're gonna have very healthy avocado, which everybody loves. We're gonna put a little more dressing on the salad. And then we're gonna cut the chicken up real quick. Oy. And put that over the top. Put that on the top like that. And then we can just put a little cilantro on the top and you got yourself a nice taco salad. And there you have it. You don't need the tortilla shell as, as hard as it, as it is to let it go. You don't need that. You can have a very healthy Mexican meal without uh, jeopardizing your health. Without the calories, that's correct. Alrighty, well thank you Patrick. And if you'd like to learn more recipes, please visit us at SouthTexasHealthSystem.com. More than one-fourth of U.S. Latinos lack a primary care physician, according to the CDC, and that number is believed to be higher in the Rio Grande Valley. If you don't have a primary care doctor, it's not too late. Here are some tips for finding the right doctor for you. It's a disturbing fact. Many Americans don't have a primary care physician. 28% of U.S. men and 17% of women don't have a primary doctor or health care provider. The problem is worse among Latinos. Among Hispanics living in the United States, 47% of men and 33% of women say they don't have a primary physician. Selecting a primary doctor is an important first step toward managing your health care. This health care provider will serve as your medical home. They'll be the doctor you visit for most medical needs, including wellness visits, routine screenings, non-emergency illnesses and the person you speak to about your health questions and concerns. Additionally, your primary care physician will be the person who refers you to see a specialist should the need arise. The relationship with your primary care physician is an important one, so you'll want to choose someone you feel comfortable having honest conversations with, someone with expertise in the areas that meet your health needs, and someone who is in network for your health insurance. Here are some tips for choosing a new primary care physician. It's important to set standards for the type of care and attention you're expecting to receive from your doctor, and then 
then make a list of the qualities you're looking for. Some things to consider include, do you prefer a male or female physician? Consider the location of the practice and how long your drive will be. There are a variety of providers who practice primary care, so you'll want to find a doctor with expertise that meets your health needs, including experience with any specific conditions of concern to you. The most common PCP specialties to choose from are family practitioners, pediatricians, geriatricians, internists, and gynecologists. Many people feel comfortable visiting a physician who is recommended by a relative, co-worker, or friend, so don't be afraid to ask for referrals. You'll also want to check if the doctor is in-network, which will help you avoid any surprise out-of-network charges or having to pay in full out-of-pocket because the doctor you chose doesn't accept your insurance plan. Once you narrow down your list, visit the doctor. There's nothing like an office visit and a face-to-face -face meeting to give you a feel for whether you've selected the right one. And when in the office, pay attention to the environmental factors. Are the staff friendly and efficient? Are the phones answered in a timely manner? And how long is the wait to see the doctor after you arrive for your appointment? And always remember, if for any reason you're not happy with your choice, most healthcare plans allow you to change your primary care physician anytime during the plan year. To begin researching primary care providers near you, you can visit South Texas Health System's Find a Doctor portal, where you'll be able to research physicians, including those accepting new patients, their specialties, and clinic locations, and even request an appointment online. Get started at doctors.southtexashealthsystem.com. That concludes this installment of South Texas Healthy Living. Until our next episode, stay healthy, stay safe, and please prioritize your health.